Happy Sunday, everyone. Uh, my name is Steve Stump, and this last week I provided or I uh, uh, presented in the spotlight for the uh, Round North Dallas Business Networking Group, and I'm going live into that group right now. If uh, you're looking for a really good networking group, uh, this is the group that you need to come to on a regular basis. But um, I shared a really funny uh, story using the three little pigs and it was so well received and a few people missed it from our regular attendance in the group. So I thought I would jump on here and go through the uh, story again for those that missed it and those that want an opportunity to watch it again and be entertained. Well, hopefully I can do that too. So you know the, the story of the three little pigs. You probably grew up listening to it, right? You had Straw Piggy and Straw Piggy made his little house out of straw. And then, then Stick Piggy, he made his little house out of sticks. And then Brick Piggy, he made his house out of bricks. And then who comes along? Well, the big bad wolf. And what does he do? He knocks on the door and he huffs and he puffs and he tries to blow their house in. Well, in this story, I share how the, a banking policy can create a financial house of bricks. And so let's go ahead and get into it. But before I thought I would share why the three little pigs. So my little girl, who's not so little anymore, used to love bedtime stories. And this was definitely in our library. This was her just a few weeks ago, bringing the hardware home from a uh, twirling competition. She's a feature twirler in Melissa High School. And my wife and I on the other side really enjoy watching her perform. But um, let's get back to the story. So you know the, the story of the Three Little Pigs. Like I said, you probably grew up on it, but I bet you didn't know they have a backstory. So here's a little bit about their backstory. So they were born on the same day because they were born in the same litter. And as they grew up in their piggy household, they never talked about money. It just wasn't something that mom and dad talked about. It wasn't talked about at the dinner table. And they never learned about it in school. So money and finances just wasn't a topic that they learned in their schools. But beside all that, they graduated college. And at age 30, they settled down and married the love of their lives. It was a beautiful ceremony. Actually, all three couples came together. It's a beautiful ceremony on the farm. All the animals were able to attend. And they had a huge reception at the end. You should have been there. Well, they're very successful. They're self-employed and making well over six figures. But you see, since they didn't learn how to um, make money or build wealth, they all had a different plan. So Straw Piggy's saving plan was stick it in the bank. You see, Straw Piggy wasn't big on learning new concepts and, and spending time um, researching how to build wealth. All he knew was banks were safe and he was going to stick his money in the bank. Now, Stick Piggy, he had a different approach. He was at least open to learning new concepts, but um, he didn't want to really spend a whole lot of time researching it. So he would listen to this guy on the radio and this guy would say, hey, you should buy term and invest the rest. And that's what he wanted to do. And he wanted to protect his family. But you see, Brick Piggy was, was somewhat of a bookworm. He loved to learn new concepts and become a student of things that he found would add value in his life. And he learned that if he could create uninterrupted compounded growth through a personal banking policy, that he could create a legacy for his family. And that was his savings plan. Well, and then you've got the big bad wolf in the story, right? What does he do? He comes knocking on the door. And he huffs and he puffs and he tries to blow their house in. Well, his first huff is inflation. Now, inflation has ran at a clip of about 3% for the past 100 years. So that by itself can do a lot of harm to one of the piggies' financial houses. We'll find out um, how and why here in a minute. The second puff is taxes. And we all know Uncle Sam's got to take his portion of our money to support the government. But the third one and the blow that gets lots of the piggies in trouble and blows their house in is consumption. You see, the piggies will spend more in their lifetime than they will ever, ever be able to save. Think about all the things that the piggies will buy over their lifetime. Just the essentials. They're going to buy groceries. They're going to have to heat their home, have electricity, have water. Then the kids that they might have are going to go off to school and then 
they're going to have cars and then they're going to buy homes and then other essentials that are necessary in their life. Consumption does a terrible thing to anyone's savings plan if it's not structured the right way. It interrupts the compounded growth of their savings. And because of that, consumption has a lot of, does a lot of damage on the piggies' financial homes. But let's get into it and find out actually what happens. Well, so each of the piggies, like I said, they're 30 years old, they are successful self-employed professionals, and they're able to save $10,000 a year at age 30, and they keep doing that for 35 years till they get to 65. But they love their little red sports cars. And so every five years, they take 40,000 and they go down to the dealership and they buy their little red sports car. And they do that until they're 65 and their kiddos say, hey, you can't drive that sports car anymore. You're a danger to the people on the road. Well, let's find out how each one of their financial houses shape up. Okay, so Straw Piggy, he saves $10,000 a year and puts it into the bank. And so after, being, after turning 35, he's got $50,000 and a little bit of money in there, $69 in terms of interest. But what does he do? He takes $40,000 out, leaving $10,069. And, $10, and he buys his little red sports car. He does that for five more years and five more years again. By the time he's 65, he has a little over $71,000 in his savings account. But who comes a knocking? You guessed it, the big bad wolf. And what does the big bad wolf say? Little pig, little pig, let me in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. And sure enough, the first huff almost completely blows his house in. You see, little, little straw piggy was putting money in the bank, earning less than 1%. He was earning about the average of about 0.07%. And at inflation running at 3% a clip for the past 100 years, that was enough to almost blow his house in, meaning every year he was actually losing purchasing value of the money he was putting into the bank. Now, taxes, he actually didn't earn a whole lot of interest with his money being in the bank, so therefore he didn't pay a lot of taxes. So this, this, this did a little bit of damage. But oh my goodness, consumption? That is what blew his house in. You see, each time he took his $40,000 out of his savings in the bank, that $40,000 was no longer earning him any money. Yeah, it purchased him a nice red shiny sports car, but he spent $280,000 over his 35 years buying sports cars. And each time he did that, taking the $40,000 out to fund that car meant that $40,000 wasn't making money for him. And so what does he do? Well, he runs over to his stick, pi st stick piggy brother's house. Now, as Stick Piggy's brother's house looks a little bit different. You see, remember, he listens to this guy on the radio that says, you should buy term and invest the rest. So that was his savings plan. And so he invested in the stock market. And let's just, let's say that on, on, on average, he earned 8% every year in the stock market. But in reality, it's not really 8% every year because sometimes there's good years and sometimes there's bad years. And so here's what happens to his plan in the market. Let's say he puts $100 in today, and then a year from now, that $100 grows to 110. But then that second year, it has a really bad year, and he loses all the $10 he made in the first year. So he's back down to $100. You see, he's in the market for two years, and he's actually not made any of his money. But if he averaged, if, if the return in that first year was 16%, well, then technically he averaged 8% every year. So being in the market can hurt you as well and interrupt your compounded interest. But let's see how his savings plan worked out. And so he would put $10,000 in the market every year. And so you can see by age 35, he had a little over $60,000 in the market. But what does he do? He takes $40,000 of it out and he buys his nice red shiny sports car. He does it again. Now at age 40, it's grown to a little over $92,000, but he takes his 40 and he buys his sports car. He keeps doing this 
and his little nest egg is growing much more than the straw piggies. At age 65, he's over $621,000 after he buys his last red shiny sports car. But who comes a knocking? You guessed it, the big bad wolf. Little pig, little pig, let me in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. And so I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. Well, the f doesn't do much damage. You see, he's earning at least 8% on average every year at a 3% clip for inflation. He's at least ahead of inflation. But boy, taxes really do take a dent out of his home and almost blows the house in. You see, every time he took $40,000 out of the market, he was paying capital gains tax. And at the rate he's paying right now this year at 15%, if he kept paying that for 35 more years, he would have spent over $18,000 in taxes. But boy, consumption, that's what really blew his house in. You see, every time he took the $40,000 out of the market, it was interrupting his compounded growth. That money wasn't in the market continuing to grow at the rate that he was earning in the market. He spent $280,000 over his 35 years, and while he was enjoying riding around in his red sports car, he was losing the opportunity cost associated with that money not being in the market. And here's the other thing he was spending on, on consumption. You remember, he wanted to buy a term and invest the rest. And so at age 30, he purchased a 30-year term uh, life insurance policy. And that term policy cost him $36,000. But here's the thing. He made a terrible mistake. He bought it and forgot it. And he forgot that it expired at age 60. And as he got older, insurance cost more and more and more because the, the insurance companies know you're going to die at some point. And so he never renewed his policy, but still he had to spend $36,000 on a term policy he would never use. Well, what does the stick piggy and the, and the straw piggy do? They run over to the brick piggy house. Now, the brick piggy house looks a lot different, and they're looking around trying to figure out what... How, how did you build this brick piggy, this brick house? Well, the first thing they notice, after five years, see, brick piggy has been putting the same $10,000 into his personal banking policy. But he's put $50,000 in, but after 35 years, it's only grown to $48,000 in cash value. You see, these personal banking policies have what's called a break-even year. In that break-even year, the amount of money you put in actually matches the cash value. And then from that year on, while you keep putting money in, it grows at a faster clip because of uninterrupted compounded growth. And so from that year on, you're putting the money in, but more money is actually in your cash value. And so let's see how that works out. At age 35, he takes his $40,000 out of his personal banking policy, but you see, it's actually still sitting in there. It, there's not $8,428 in his personal uh, bank. There's $48,428. How did he do that? Well, with these type of personal banking policies, he can take a policy loan out against his cash value and then use that policy loan however he would like. The insurance company doesn't care what he uses the money for. They don't care what his credit worthiness is. He simply says, I want $40,000, and they wire the money into his account. So what does he do? He goes and buys his $40,000 sports car. He does it again in another five years and in another five years. And by age 65, he's achieved uninterrupted compounded growth in his personal bank and has over $932,000. But... That big bad wolf is persistent. And what does he do? He comes a knocking. Little pig, little pig, let me in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. And so sure enough, his first huff, inflation. Now here's the thing. 
just like the stick piggy's house, inflation didn't do hardly any harm to his house. You see, with these personal banking policies, he's earning a guaranteed rate of 4%. Now, with the right policy, with the right company, he can even participate in an indexed rate and earn more. But if he doesn't receive an additional dividend from the insurance company, then he's always going to at least earn 4%. So he's always ahead of inflation in that respect. Now taxes, now here's the interesting thing. He actually didn't pay any money in taxes. His money in the personal banking policy grew tax-free. And when he took his policy loan out, each time he bought his red sports car was $40,000, he could use that money completely tax-free. And then consumption. Now don't get me wrong, he still spent $280,000 on consumption, but the way that he did it allowed him to keep his money in his personal bank and actually finance the purchase of those cars on his own terms. You see, he would decide how to pay himself back over those five years. And being a responsible banker, he actually paid himself back with interest, further growing the cash value in his policy. So as you know the, how the story goes, the, the big bad wolf walks off defeated and the two other brothers come to live with Brick Piggy in his financial house of bricks. And while they're living with him, he shares the concepts of personal banking with them. And this is what he tells them. One, his personal bank is powered by a whole life insurance product with a mutual insurance company that pays a guaranteed rate and pays the policyholders a dividend. They don't pay stockholders. In fact, as a mutual company, they don't have stockholders. They have policyholders. And these whole life insurance companies have been around well over 100 years, paying dividends for as far back as, any, as anyone can remember. Many of them will show you over the last 15 years in a documented brochure that they have paid rates anywhere from 5 to 7%. And then here's the key. You want to work with a mutual insurance company that has a non-direct recognition policy for its loans. Now, it doesn't matter the, the variation in the non-direct policy or non-direct recognition policy because a lot of them have, get pretty creative. You see, they control the money inside their insurance company. But the net bottom line is the money that you take out of the policy needs to grow at an uninterrupted rate. And when it can do that, that means they're honoring some type of Now, how did the stick piggy learn about this? Well, remember, he was a bookworm, and he loved to read and be a, become a student of concepts that he thought would add value in his life. And he came to learn about the and asset. It's a great book that he really enjoyed reading. He finished it within a couple of days as it simplifies the concepts of personal banking so that every little piggy can understand it. In the comments down below, you have an opportunity to go purchase this book at half the cost of Amazon. I encourage you to go in there, pay for shipping and handling. That's all. I think it's like $9.95 versus $19.95 on Amazon. And what he learned by watching the, or reading the AND asset is these personal banking policies, they become his AND asset, which means he has that personal bank and he can use it to fund investments and he can use it to fund purchases in his life. So being an avid bookworm, he also came across a book by a CPA. And in this book, the author of the book says, if the government wants to limit something that you want to do, then you should try to do as much as that as possible as, as they will allow because it's in your best interest. And you see, he understood that back in the 80s, the IRS realized that a lot of money was being put into these policies by the wealthy. So much so that if 
they didn't step in and do something, it was going to jeopardize the amount of revenue that the IRS was going to be collecting for the government. And so in the late 80s, they actually put limits together that um, uh, restricted the amount of money you can put in this policy. So while it's not as advantageous as it was in the, in the heydays of the 80s, these are still very good policies to use. In fact, our own President Biden has several of these policies in force, and you can, you can see them in his financial disclosure document. Now, knowing that the government was limiting him and he wanted to do as much of it as possible, that's exactly what he did. And so I bet you didn't know he met, married Miss Piggy. Yeah, I never understood that relationship with the frog either. But Miss Piggy had a policy on him and he had a policy on her. And as they uh, had a litter of piggies, they insured their piggies as well. And what this allowed them to do was create a collection of policies that acted as their own family bank. And here's how they used their family bank. As the little piggies grew up and went to college, they used the family bank to finance their college, all while still buying cars and purchasing homes and whatnot. As the little piggies grew into adulthood and they started to purchase their cars and get married and purchase their homes, they used the family bank to purchase these major assets in their lives. You see, this allowed them to keep the principal inside their, their family bank and being responsible bankers and paying themselves back with interest, it allowed them to accelerate the cash value as well. So the other two brothers, they learned about this concept and later on in life, the three brothers went into business with their own diner. It was a fantastic place to go eat. All the farm animals loved to go eat it, eat their breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, as you can imagine, there was no bacon or ham on the menu, but it was uh, plentiful with a lot of milk and a lot of eggs. Well, needless to say, because they had great food and great service, they were very successful running their diner. And because each of the piggies was instrumental in the diner, they made sure that each one was insured with key man policies with these special insurance contracts that allowed them to create a business bank. And here's how they use these policies to fund their diner. You see, every month they knew what their expenses were. They knew what their labor was. They knew what the groceries were going to cost to be able to fill their menu. They knew what the electricity and the gas and the water was going to cost to be able to keep the lights on and keep the running water going. And so what they would do is they would take the money out of their policies as a policy loan and they would fund their expenses for the month. And then they would roll those expenses plus uh, revenue, plus income, plus net income back into their policy with uh, their interest payment. Therefore, it's continuing to accelerate their cash value and, and never interrupting their compounded growth. And so over uh, the, the, the life of the three brothers, they created a legacy for the entire family as other generations learned how to use these personal banking policies. I hope you enjoyed it. And as Porky said, blah, 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 that's all, folks. Well, this was a lot of fun to do in person. Um, I wanted to do it live because I just think it adds a little bit more when I'm, I'm doing it live. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, definitely go check out the AND asset. I'll put the link in the post. And then uh, here's how you get in contact with me. I am happy to meet, have a one-on-one. -on -one. We can just explore this. You don't have to be interested in it. I'm just happy to educate people. Give me a text, give me a call. I had a lot of questions when I presented this, this live. And so what I'll also be doing is watching the feed down below. Just type in your question. Uh, I'll type in a response or I might jump on a quick video and, and just post it right in there. Thank you everyone for your time. I really enjoyed the spotlight this, this last weekend. I look forward to future spotlights with all the other members. Have a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.